Madam Speaker, 175 days ago, as we gathered here in this spot, the House floor became a crime scene. The U.S. Capitol, this temple of democracy, was ransacked. Property was damaged. And more importantly, lives were lost. Insurrectionists tried to stop our democracy in its tracks. A mob wanted to prevent the certification of a free and fair election in America, and they resorted to violence to do it. I will never forget that day. I was one of the last members off this House floor as we were being taken to a secure location away from the mayhem. As I was walking out, I looked over and I saw these people, homegrown terrorists, I call them, literally smashing the doors with their bare fists and breaking the glass to try to get at us. They weren't here to peacefully protest. They were fueled by rage and here to cause harm. I looked in their eyes and I saw hate. Many of my colleagues feared for their lives. Some called loved ones to say goodbye. The staff that worked here barricaded their office doors. They ran down these marble halls, trying one door after the next, just searching for safety. Others hid in closets, terrified. You know, when uh, those of us uh, who are elected to Congress uh, put our names on the ballot, um, you know, we are prepared to take all kinds of incoming. But the staff here, the cafeteria workers here, the cleaning crew, the people who make our democracy function day in and day out, they do not. But still, they found themselves in danger, afraid for their lives. We must speak the truth of what happened that day, Madam Speaker. And shockingly, there is an effort by some in this Congress to whitewash and minimize what went on. One of my colleagues even suggested it was somehow just a normal tourist visit, as if facts don't matter, as if we all didn't see with our own eyes what happened. History will judge how we respond to the events of that day, and the glare of history should be cast most harshly on the minority leader who worked overtime to prevent a bipartisan, bicameral commission from being formed to examine what happened on January 6th. A bipartisan commission emerged out of the Homeland Security Committee with a bipartisan vote. Everything the minority leader asked for in this commission, he got it, he got it all. But then I guess Donald Trump called him and he began walking back his support and whipping against his own ranking member's bipartisan deal. It has been 25 weeks since an insurrection in our country. A commission should be already at work right now getting the facts about this attack on our democracy so it, should, so it will never, ever, ever happen again. Now, sadly, a majority of Republicans objected to that happening. Now, they, now they may have delayed uncovering the truth, Madam Speaker, but, Madam Speaker, the truth will not stay buried forever. And that is why we are here today, because the facts matter. A select committee will finally get to the truth about the events of January 6th. It is modeled after a select committee formed when my Republican colleagues were in charge. And I hope I'm wrong, but if passed as prologue, many of my Republican friends will stand up today and say no. They will oppose this select committee and say they want a different approach. Well, let me again remind them, we already gave you exactly what you asked for with the commission, and even that wasn't good enough. I think for some on the other side, nothing that gets to the truth will ever be good enough because they do not want the truth. Michael Fanone, a Metropolitan Police Officer for nearly two decades, responded to the insurrection on January 6th. In a letter that he wrote to all of us, uh, he said, and I quote, I struggle daily with the emotional anxiety of having survived such a traumatic event but I also struggle with the anxiety of hearing those who continue to downplay the events of that day and those who would ignore them altogether with their lack of acknowledgement. The indifference shown to my colleagues and I is disgraceful." End quote. And Madam Speaker, I ask unanimous consent to put the full text of his letter in the record. Without objection. 
I am tired of the indifference. I'm tired of the delays. And quite frankly, I'm sick and tired of the fact that there are too many people in this chamber who continue to put party over country and propagate the lies, distortions, and falsehoods that led to January 6th. It is disgusting. And for Congress to do nothing in response to a literal insurrection would, it, would allow our democracy to be chipped away at from the inside. Not on my watch. Our system of government is fragile. It is not a given. It is a choice. Looking down on us from the gallery right now are representatives of the DC Metropolitan Police and the US Capitol Police. And I want to thank them and their colleagues for their service and for protecting us and our democracy on January 6th. And to my colleagues on the other side of the aisle who are about to vote no on this, please, no lectures on respect for the police. Because a no vote is a vote to cover for those who brutally attacked the police on January 6th. And I say to my colleagues in this House, they will be watching as we cast our votes. History will be watching. And I pray that we have the moral courage to do what is right, that we choose truth, and that we choose to defend our democracy. I reserve the balance of my time. Gentlemen reserves. Gentlelady from 